in Davao. I as you go. So next we're going to once again to Davao with uh, Christopher to see the work. So I'm here standing in the, the delegated authority to continue the work and to celebrate the new currency this morning. Our theme for today is the goal of the straight and narrow. Straight and narrow. And mostly it talks about our way of living and it talks about our eternal destiny. That how we live today is connected to where we're going when we die. The objective this morning is somehow to put in your heart and mind of the called eternal perspective. Something that you don't not only live for today in this world, but believing that there is a next life after death. And the second is also to encourage us to live our life today with a commitment to our God. If this would determine in the part of the kingdom or part or not the part of the kingdom. So, when you read the gospel, something is really important to mention to this. God is always talking about a relationship to Him. God is talking about His coming. God is talking about His kingdom. Not only here, but in the next. Believing that we all part of it and there will be judgment when He comes and when He dies in the face of it. So, I hope and believe we have an eternal perspective that we don't only live our life today in this world, but also the perspective of eternal living everlasting. Without that, then we don't give or we don't care about heaven, we don't care about what we're going, we're going when we die. And people don't care much about you know what will happen next. They all they all give their life today. But today, this life today is just temporary. All are temporary. Everything we have, we have here on this earth, we get to live everything here on earth. We don't bring anything at the other side. And on the other side, where the kingdom of God is, that where we live everlasting. We don't die in the of God. Or, it's up to us, we're going to be getting it. for heaven, or it is for heaven. So that's what I want. So an eternal perspective in life. Not only to live a life of today, but an eternal life in heaven. Because how you live today is connected to that. How could I have this kind of thought in my mind? What a turning point from all of this what we call an eternal perspective. It's become more clearer to me. The story when my niece died. He is diagnosed with breast cancer. He's 34 years old. He has uh, And before she died, because he's always at the heart of believing in God, where healing, where continue to uh, pray, relationship to God, to get to the end. What struck me is the first story before he died. He said, bedridden for months. Bedridden. Just been waiting. And one day, he told us that her heart stopped. So they thought, this is it. The heart stopped. And about 
30 to 20, 30 minutes. She was about. But the most important thing there is her story. She said, at that time, she said, he's struggling very, very far, walking, walking, and walking, until she reached a mountain. To walk in the place, and then as I come here in that mountain, is a big house, and it's so bright. The door is so bright, and as I come to the door of that mountain, or that, that big house in the mountain, it said there's a man in the door. So shining, I cannot see his face. And she said, your time is not yet over. But, she said, when I look at my left, I could see a big cage. Pulungan. And there's a person there in that big cage. Pulungan. He's there. And then at my right, I see that big stone. A big stone said, into gold. And my name is there. In that big stone. As you look at the door, you could see her grandmother, also died over many years ago, waving at her. And said, I look at the big stone and I could see my name written in that stone. I believe it is the book of life. Because my name is written there. And Lola's name is also the Lola Kumuchi. His name, her name is also there. And that why that get that God person is. So bright said, your time is not over. You could come in, or you could go back. So I will go back. I tell them, no children. So, let me go. With the short story, you see water. He said, I want, just give me water. Water. So, they did the water. He said, he told the story. And most of them, they would not believe. Or they're shocked. But one thing that said everyone that her feet is so dirty. And she is bedridden there for three months. And how come? Her feet is so dirty. You can, you can imagine a person walking barefoot in a stone. Sabo ka na. Gabo ka na. Yan na. She said, I am walking, walking, walking. She said, Can you see? That she has been living here for three months. And she is walking and walking for many, many miles. And her feet is dirty. Nobody could explain that. But he said, in one day, heaven is true, heaven is clear. Heaven is true. Jesus is real. And truly, my name is written in the book of life, in that stone. So with that story, it helps us now understand that heaven is real. There's heaven and there's hell. And that person in the cave, I believe that is Satan. Because the Bible says one day we will be released, but he's in the cave. There is one person. So with that story, it 
help me understand and believe that there is heaven and there is hell and we are going to face God when we die or when we pick up we need to face judgment in front of me. So we we'll give us the reality that today this is an eternal life, this is a temporary life, and there is an eternal life. And with that concept that there is heaven, there is hell, and there is Jesus in front of the door. It, would encourage us to live our life today God's way. Because God will judge us. Because without that, wala kang pakialan mo. You don't care. This gospel will encourage us also to live our life for God. As we read the gospel, start says here, Verse 22, he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? This is the topic of the discussion. Lord, few who are saved. You're me. Lord, think it about that. That is the topic of discussion here. And the Lord answered, Strive to enter to the narrow gate for many. I say you will seek to enter and will not be able. The Lord answered them. He did not answer them, if it you or many, he answered them in like a rhetorical question. Another question is that is that the question of how many will be saved? The question the Lord is giving back to this question is, are you going to be saved or not? That is the question that binigay ni Lord sa kanya. Yung answer. Ang tanong nila, Lord, kung di ba, kung marami ang maliligtas? Ang sagot ni Lord, dito sa kanyang sabi, you could read it the way, is that, are you safe or not? Yun ang tanong niya. Yun ang yung sagot ng ating Panginoon. So also, many will ask this question to Lord, how many will be saved? All of us will be saved? And the Lord would tell us in a direct way, or in a subtle way, say, do you believe that you're saved? Do you believe that you're saved? We're part of this kingdom of God. And I said here, strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. Strive. It means to make all effort with all force, give everything you've got. See, the word strive here is like connected to a sport arena, like a player who is running or playing. That giving everything he got to win the goal, like in real. Every one that's giving their best to get the goal. And was in the TV last night and was interviewed about the long marathon, one of the highlights of the Olympics. And our representative woman. I think she finished. There are 130 entries. And I think she finished 126. At least she finished. At least. And she said, I, I, I'm, I'm about to give up. I cannot be ready. Because the heat, Iba ang init sa Brazil. Iba ang init sa Brazil. That's why people over there are dark skinned. Mas mainit sa dito. Ang tawag sa atin ay moreno. Ang tawag sa kanila, mulato. Ang kanilang pag-iting, 
parang talong. May pagka violet na red na brown. Something like that. That's the real Brazilian. What you see in, the, in those models are just part of the Portuguese blood. But the real Brazilian people are dark, curly hair, but you get a new look. You're not. You're not the first time. Of the big and big and Brazilian, they're tall, similar, dark, similar. Answer? You're not. I'm going to If it's are dark, they're no sense. And the heat there is different from us. That's why that's the thing that really wear me down, the heat. But it finishes the same way. That is striving, working, giving everything you've got. So in short, the kingdom of God has no place for people who are complacent, people who are passive, people who are in just a maintenance. No, we should be in that place, in a, in a, a person who is giving everything we've got, giving all our effort. That's what the kingdom is all about. And said here, like John the Baptist, he said that uh, the kingdom of God is like a door that, that, that the people are pressing in. Just force it in. Why? Because there is opposition. The narrow door would always remind us it's not easy to enter the kingdom of God. She, does, she says here that we have to strive, we have to give all our effort, and we have to conquer the situation that we're in or the situation that we're facing in. And God says, how is that? How, how hard it is? Is it hard? Or oh, hard for people who are not willing? But the Lord gave us a sample to this. Again, He said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. I believe that's one of the criteria. Deny yourself, pay your cross, and follow me. It's hard. There's, there's any sacrifice to do. It's not easy in entering the kingdom of God. And say, what is the connection with us today? In my work, in my family. Well, if you have an eternal perspective, we have to live now our life within the family, in our job, in our ministry, with all of God, giving our best to Anton Nyakino. That should be our goal. For the straight and the narrow. Because it's not easy to come in. So it will be our motto or slogan to not to give up, but continue to enter in, pressing on because there is an opposition. There will be a challenge. There will be shaking, as in the Hebrew says. So, brothers and sisters, it will challenge us today to live in that life where we will be part of the kingdom of God. It says here, it is a narrow door. Because if it is a narrow door, you will find it hard to enter. The Bible says, work out your salvation is fear and trembling. It is us who would work it out. So not only living for today, just getting by the food in the table, Something to live by for today, but have to have an eternal perspective. Every time when I was called to pray to give a last sight to a dying person, how I I wish that could before I could pray for that person still alive. But there are times I was called already to be dead. And 
Why do you why you call a priest anyway before that person dies? Hama tatawa na to pare para basahan ni panahan. Why? Because it would help them prepare for the next one. Because we believe for the eternal life. That's why we have did the priest pray for that person of communion. And even in the ritual service, we have the ritual service when in the way. There's always a question in the mind of the family. Does this person, does this relative of them in heaven or in hell? They always ask. I they don't ask that directly, but I could. Sense it in their heart and in mind of this question. Does my father, my brother, my mother will go to heaven? Is in heaven right now or not? Somehow, somehow we have a different perspective. But my question in my mind is how does this person leave this life? We still alive at Buhi Palaimao. How? He had lived his life for her life. Does he live her life for his life for God? Or he live her life, his life only for himself? We don't know. Only God could judge him. But we, right now, to hear this, would give an inspiration, confrontation to live our life for God now, why? Because there is a time limit. We once the master of the house, as soon as you set the door, you begin to stand out and knock at the door. Lord, Lord, open to us. And he will, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where you are from? There is a time limit. How old is the time limit? First, when you die, that's the end. That's it. All our chances now are gone. We are living today, all the opportunities, all the chances given to us by God. When that time will come, that's it. Finito. Suppose. Or when he come. So, here, the Lord said, do not delay. Do not delay. Today is the day of salvation. Today. Don't pray, don't wait. Or don't procrastinate. Next time. Next time. Next time. Today. Because you don't know what is tomorrow. There is a time limit. And again, the door, knock at the door. Lord, Lord, open for us and answer and say to you, I don't know you. Why? Why people stand at the door? It's because they delay their decision. They make a dilly dally. And then the Lord closed the door and said, Lord, Lord. <coughs> See? The Lord wants us to act today. We have time today, early as it is, do it now. But people, you know, kapi kitang Pilipino. Kung si Indo did like, ito kita magwoto. Aga pa inyit pa. Na mahina, hotel eh. Ito sa akil ko, ukol dito man sa nawasa. Ito sa biyaya kong siya. Kita pa mayroon ka na ng maaki. And I'm going to buy a No? Yeah. The Lord says, do it early. Do it early. Don't wait for the last minute. Do it early. Because there will be a time limit. Do it now. And then you can say, we eat and drink in your presence and your in our streets. But I tell you, 
I do not know you. You are from the part of you who workers of iniquity. I said, Lord, Lord, open, open the door, Lord. We and drunk in your presence. We attend the Eucharist, we attend the Mass. We listen to your teaching. I do not know you. Why do you say you don't know me? Because yes, I attend the mass. Yes, you serve God maybe. But I need to be able to do it in the law. Or have hearted now? Or like today could say, we did not have a atom name at all. Like say, Lord, we attend the mass, we attend Lord, we do the worship. Or say, Lord, Lord. Here is my baptismal certificate. Proof. Well, baptismal certificate is just a piece of paper. Maybe to the government, that is very legal. But to God, that baptismal certificate is not just only a piece of paper or proof that will baptized, but also talk about responsibility to live the life of God. Far more that you should be judged by God because we know that God and that He or baptize us. We hear the word, we come to the mass. So far more the Lord will require upon us because we know more than other people don't know. Much more given, much more required. So willing to serve God and to be part of the kingdom of God, it is responsible to live a life to God. He said, yes, you have attended the mass. Yes, you serve God. Yes, you pray. But that's not all. I have given you your gift. You're pressing on. When, like that, there's rain, I continue to go to church. There's some problem, I continue to go to church, I continue to obey God. There's, you know, that's one thing of pressing on. Because just people today, okay lang to, okay, okay lang. Hap, 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 hap on um, commitment. But that's what the Lord is requiring. He wants our heart. He wants to give our life. He wants to surrender our life and to Him. And that's what the Lord is right requiring. We have that we have we have that concept. It will affect how we live our family. Our job. See, we could be we should be a good father, good husband, because we know God will just in the in the, in the end. To be a good uh, worker or employee or employer. Or whatever. It's a uh, student. With that concept, we're going to give best to God because we are going to face him. So that's the connection there between the eternal and of today. If we have the concept of eternal, we have to live our life today, giving best to what everything of God. Because God has given us talent, ability, time, everything, and then we're going to answer back to God. So there's connection with our life today. If we don't say, no one has connection in church, then it's a whole high book. It's a familiar name, it's about because if you have that eternal perspective that God will require in us, and God has given you talent, ability, you give your best to your job as an employee. If you could employ your employee, a student, whatever we are, whatever, whatever the state we are in this life, because you owe it to God. That's the connection there. So the Lord has given us today to live, to live a life. You will with me and not to take me you, see Abraham, Isaac, and take the law, the practice, and the kingdom of God, and yourselves class. In nothing, living with it. This is a, 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 a picture of a person who is regretting. Regretting why I have not done it. I have done it, but I have. So we see weeping and gnashing, that, that, that's, that's a person who is really regretting everything. Have you seen that person? 
So either na naka kaya kaya but the instant yes, you know. If I just could make the time back, this I'm going to do. But one thing that God has given us is time. Time is the biggest back. We cannot, we cannot do anything about yesterday, it's the past. What is today for today? In the future. Nothing can be future. I see this in the Olympic last, last, last day, the TV. In the marathon of men, the last marathon. The Puerto Rican, who is a champion. He's a champion. And also, uh, he's one of the best runners in the world. And start, before the start, and in that, uh, as a uh, gun, that will be always uh, make it to start. He starts that way. Kumbaga, hindi pa nga nakaputok yung go, tumayo na siya. And he was disqualified. That is his chance on the end of progress. He's a champion. But no more. One fatal mistake. Is out of the game. And he kneeled down crying, crying, crying. Because Olympics just another four years ago, not again in, in Tokyo. I don't know if it run again, but because he made a false start, he was disqualified. And he's there sitting down in that arena, crying, crying. But that's the that's the rule. He is disqualified. You could see the regret. Why you can make a bad start, but you cannot make it back again. So here, the Lord says, "Don't be like these people." Nandum kane, and you have been invited by God. They've been invited by God. It's like it's like a, a, a big dinner, always using the parable, a banquet that the Lord is inviting everyone, but people sometimes will not come. Why the Lord is inviting you? Because you are important to Him. That's why come. And that's what I always do. When somebody invites you to a dinner, birthday, wedding, the must that if I'm always on the time to it way that I could be there because they invite me because they they think that I am important to them to be part of the wedding of the birthday and that's what the Lord is showing unto us He invites us because you and me is important He wants no one would perish but it's hard to us to respond to this. And said, be nothing and weeping. You have a big regret when you see other people coming in and you are thrust out. You will come from the east, the west, the north, the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, they are last, who will be the first, and they are first, who will be the last. These people come from the west, or the north, or the south. Who are these people? We don't know. But we part of the kingdom of God. And you just regret that they are there. Part of the banquet. And you are trust out. And I said here, in literally, they are last will be the first. And they are first, who will be the last? What's the meaning of this? First of all, it talks about this highlight people. Because they should be the first to receive salvation. Because salvation is for the Jew first. But because they did not believe, they reject Jesus. The Kabir will become last to come in. And they will be the last. 
who will become the first, who is this, the last, you and me, pagan people, gentle people, who responded to God, supposed to be we are the last. But we responded, we become the first. Jewish people, it should be the first to receive salvation. But they reject Jesus, that's why they believe that we will be the last to come in. And we should be the last. The pagan, the Gentiles, become the first because we responded to God. Another meaning that is being applied to us. These are the people. At first, they've started the relationship to God. And at the end, they lose out. They started good. And at the end, they don't make it. Maybe that the people whom they have invited. The last to come in, maybe the last, but they come first because they have continued before God. Sad to hear some stories that evidently I should run. They're the one who bring you to the church. They're the one who testify to me. They're the one who give to me the testimony. That's why I go with them. I went with them and they're so I'm here now in the church. But the sad story, they're not, not here. Sila yung buong bay sa akin dito. And I'm here now. Ang malungkot, di nag-invite, di na nawala. That's also the thing about some people being the last and the first, and the first and the last. The law says, we have to make our commitments from the start until the end. We have to make the decision not to fall down, not to quit. Because everyone is facing, facing some trials. Everyone is facing circumstances. Everyone is facing some testing in life. And they have overcome it. Why? And you. The prophet says, if you cannot make it in the day of trouble, how weak you are. How weak you are. Your strength is weak because others could make it while you cannot. That was that's why God says, when you come to me, when you receive me as your Lord and Savior, it is not a bad process. It's not a bad process. There will be challenges. Even to the point when you come to God, Satan becomes our enemy. So automatic now we have our enemy. But we make hard for us. That's why we have to press on, press on, press on, press on. Give everything we've got, with all power, with all force, to continue to get into the kingdom of God. So once again, the Lord is reminding us that the kingdom of God has no place for lukewarm people, for passive people, for maintenance people. Or complacent. There's no no place for that because you'll be left out. You will be a casualty. You should, we should be victor, not victim. So, brothers, today the Lord is reminding us that there's life in the other side. So we, it will help us to live a life today with God that is connected to your school. To your house, to your job, to your family, to your work, to your business. If you believe that there's life on the other side, you have to make the best of it today for God because we are going to answer it to God. How we become a student, we are a student, as a businessman, how we become a businessman, as a father, as a husband, how all of us, all of us will be part of that kingdom. Not only today, as part of the kingdom, but also the kingdom.